How many realize we're living in trying times now? Amen. The enemy is trying his best to shut the church out. But I thank God for the word of God. Jesus said, upon this rock I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. How many believe that tonight? Amen. Pray God with the false prophets are coming in. The devil's trying to turn people around. But I thank God. God still has a room they're going to stand in these last and evil days. There's no time to play church. How many believe it tonight? I was thinking the other day, why oh, play and pretend when you can have the real thing? You don't need to pretend to be saved. You can be saved. It's no pretending and pray God to have the Holy Ghost. You can receive the Holy Ghost. Amen. It's real right now. Amen. And pray God, we'll believe in God. We thank God for this convocation. It's the time when we come together to fellowship, praise God, and seek God, praise God for the more of God. Amen. This is not just a revival. This is where saints is on fire for God. Come and share with one another, praise God, and that we may grow in God. Amen. That's why we have these uh, seminars. I pray. This is a place we come to seek the more of God. Amen. I don't know about you, but I want to get just a little bit closer to him. Amen. Pray God, if you're sick in your body, this is a place we're expecting God to do the supernatural and miraculous. How many know that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever? I mean, he's still saving, he's still healing, he's still delivering, he's still setting people free. So if you're discouraged, you're bound, pray God, you don't know which way to go and what to do, just hang around here just a little bit longer. I believe God will give you direction. How many believe that tonight? So we just thank God for being here tonight. We're going to the word of God and praise God. I'm not planning on being before you very long tonight, but how many knows the time to hear what thus says the Lord? We're going to the gospel of Mark, the 16th chapter, and we're going to begin reading at that 15th verse. And I want you to listen to the word of the Lord because the Bible says faith come by hearing and hearing comes by hearing the word. Amen. All right, read. And he said unto them. And Jesus said unto them. Go ye. Go ye. Into all the world. Into all the world. And preach the gospel. And preach the gospel. To every creature. To every creature. He that believeth. And he that believeth. And is baptized. And is baptized. Shall be saved. Shall be saved. The word saved means deliverance. Read. But he that believeth not. But he that believeth not. Shall be damned. Shall be damned. And these signs, and these signs shall follow them that and believe. And these signs, certain signs, these signs shall follow them that believe. That believe it. In my name. In my name. I'll give you the thought to use my name. Shall they? In, in my name. Shall they cast out? Shall devils? they cast out devils? They shall speak. They shall speak with new tongues. With new tongues. They shall take up serpents. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly and thing. And if they drink any deadly thing. It shall, not, it hurt shall them. not hurt them. Read. They shall lay hands. They shall lay hands. On the sick. On the sick. And they shall recover. And the sick shall recover. So then after the Lord had spoken unto so them. So then after the Lord had spoken unto them. He was received up into heaven. He was received up into heaven. And sat on the right hand of God. And sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth. And they went forth. And preached everywhere. And preached everywhere. The Lord working with the them. The Lord working with them. And confirming the and word. And confirming the word. With signs following. With signs following. Amen. Amen. We thank God for the reading of his word tonight. We're going to talk about the great commission tonight. Amen. At this particular time, Christ had came down from heaven, finished his work, and he was getting ready to leave. And he gave a command to his disciples. And that command was to go into all the world and preach to every creature. I was thinking about that word creature. Amen. Pray, well, God, so which way you've been twisted, messed up, or what? Pray, Jesus said, preach the gospel to that individual. Preach the gospel to every creature. How many believe that tonight? In the gospel, pray God, I believe the apostle Paul said, Romans 1 and 16, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ because it's the power of God and the salvation to them that believe. Then I begin to think about the gospel. You know the gospel is so gentle, praise God. He can throw his arm around you and deliver you, praise God, and hug you and deliver and set you free and fill you with the Holy Ghost. But then on the other hand, it's the most powerful thing on the face of this earth. 
Amen. Pray that they can knock you down, knock the daylight out of you, and knock everything that's not like God or loose from it. That's power in the word of God. How many believe that tonight? Amen. Praise God. And I think about, pray God, why that Christ wants us to go into all the world. He wants every individual, every creature to know, pray God, the price that he paid that we might have a right to the tree of life. God is concerned about you. How many believe that tonight? God loves you. Remember, this is your first time ever being in church. I don't care how low the devil that took you and what you've been through. Jesus loves you. His love is on the condition. How many believe that tonight? And God wants something better for you. This is why God has commanded us to carry this gospel everywhere. Now, you may not be a full pulpit preacher, praise God, but if you've been saved and you've been delivered by the power of God, you got a message to give somebody. You believe it? Say amen. Now thinking about the time that the church need to be stirred. Pray God to run with the gospel of Jesus Christ and tell this lost and dying world there is a living Christ that is able to save, to loose you and deliver you and set you free. You believe it? Say amen. When I think about, praise God, the price that Christ prayed that we might have a right to the tree of life. Now what was it? Pray God that brought Christ all the way from heaven, amen, to die at Calvary that you and I might have a right to the tree of life. Listen, pray God, sin is a terrible thing. It costs a great price. See, the Bible said the wedges of sin is death. Not 10 years, not 15 years, but the wedges of sin is death. Then when I think about when Adam broke the commandments of God in sin, we're living in a day and time that people don't really, really, really stop and realize what sin is. And if the Lord would allow me tonight, I would like to take just a little time to try to give you a glimpse of what sin really is. Because I feel like if many people really, pray God, understood, pray God, what sin was, there'd be more people would come to God. You believe it? Say amen. Now, praise God, when God created man upon the face of this earth, brother, this was a beautiful place, a beautiful environment to live in. There was no sin. There was no sickness. There was no disease. Even the animals didn't eat one another. Uh, but when man broke God's law and sin came upon the face of this earth, brother, everything began to take place. You be would say, man, people began to get sick. Man was not created to die. Amen. And sin began to come up on the face of the earth. Praise God. Many different things begin to take place. And I was thinking as I was reading and praying this evening concerning the message, and I began to think about sin. Sin is a terrible thing. Get me pray, God, first James, I believe it is, praise God. What is that? One and twelve, I believe it is. Let's read just a little bit. I'm going to try to get over to you what sin is. Really, a sin is like an eating cancer. It can start like a pimple and it will continue to spread and spread until you are destroyed. Read. Blessed is the man. Listen what the Bible said. Blessed is the man. That endureth temptation. Listen, we're going to be tried and we're going to be tempted down here. As long as we're still on the face of this earth, we're going to be tried and we're going to be tempted. But the Bible said, blessed is the man that endureth do is tempted. Listen, beloved, we intend to stand for God and do work for God. We got, there's something we got to endure. God's not going to move everything. You believe it? Say man. But we got to make up in our mind. I'm for Christ I live and for Christ I die. Brother, if I have to endure it to hang in there with God, I'm going to do it. You believe it? Say man. Read. For when he is tried, for when he is tried, he shall receive, he shall receive the crown of life, the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to which them, which the Lord has promised us to them that love him. Let no man say, when he is, listen what the word of God says, let no man say, when he is tempted, when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. I'm tempted of God. God does not tempt you. Read. For God cannot be tempted. For God cannot be tempted. You can't entice God. God cannot be tempted. With evil. With evil. Neither tempteth he. Neither tempteth he. Any man. Any man. But every man is tempted. But every man is tempted. When he is drawn away. When he's drawn away. Of his own lust. Of his own lust. And enticing. And enticing. 
Then when lust hath conceived. Listen to what it says. Now then when lust has conceived. It bringeth forth sin. It bringeth forth sin. And sin. And sin. When it is finished. When it is finished. It bringeth forth death. It bringeth forth death. And you see how sin starts? It can start very, very small. The devil trying to entice you to do something and lie and lay it on God. If you allow that thing to concentrate on that thing and to let that thing grow, it will get bigger and bigger and bigger. And after a while, it brings forth death. Now, just look at sin. Amen. Sin will take your daughter and make a prostitute out of that sin. Amen. Sin can take your son and make a drug addict out of it. Sin can take your son and make a murder. He can rape. That's sin. Pray God can abuse you, praise God, and, and just beat you up. Up. This is the work of sin. Are you listening to me? Get the picture. Look at sin. Kidnap your little kid and sell him. Take your kid and abuse it. Amen. With sexuality. This is sin. Sin caused sickness. I'm not saying you're sick. But you ain't sin because bring it, you're sick, but bring it, sin came through the after sickness came through the aftermath of sin. Hallelujah. Amen. But in the midst of all of this, the Bible said, For God so loved the world. The world is the unregenerate, the ungodly. The world will do some of it and everything, but God loved the world. One scripture says, what is man that God is so mindful of? Out of all God's creation, man is God's masterpiece of his creation. But man is stooped to the lowest of anything that God created, but yet God loves it. The wages of sin is death. It's cruel. It will abuse you. It will destroy you. Hallelujah. He's taking the best thing in heaven to pay the penalty for your sins. And God was willing to give the best that he had, which was his only begotten son. Amen. To pay for your sins and your mind. Amen. God wanted you delivered. Amen. Are you listening to me here tonight? Listen, beloved, God loves you. You may be the biggest crack dealing in Dallas, but God loves you. And over 1,900 years ago, Christ died that you could be set free. You don't have to be a dope head. You don't have to be bad. God loves you. He wants you free. The Bible said, there's no greater love than this that a man laid down his life. Christ laid down his life that we can be saved, that we can be healed, that we can be delivered. Can you believe it? Shame on. You don't have to stay in your situation. The power of the gospel, the good news, that God can change your life. Amen. Christ went to Calvary for your sins and mine. 39 stripes was put up on his back for the healing of the nation. And Brother Bray, his back was busted. Amen. Pieces of flesh was pulled from his back. And the Bible said, by his stripes, we were healed. He bowed our sin on a tree. First Peter 2, 24. He bowed our sin. He came. Sin was such a horrible thing. Man could not pay the debt for sin. Christ came. God gave his son. Christ gave his life. That we could be saved. Read. Who his own self who his own self bear our sins bear our sin in his own body on the tree in his own body on the tree that we listen he took our place he took your place in my place that we could be saved that we could be delivered that we being dead to sins that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness should live unto righteousness by whose stripes by whose stripes ye were healed it took this for you to be delivered. It took this for you to be saved. 
This is why Christ gave the commission when he got ready to leave to go back to heaven. I want you to go into all the world. I want every creature to hear this. I want every creature to know about this. That they can be liberated. They can be delivered. They can be saved. They can be healed by my stripes. They can be healed. They can be delivered. That is if they believe. The good news is your life can be changed. This is not a message of yesterday. This is a message of the day. The Bible did not say that God was going to do everything. If you notice here, he said, pray, I want you to go. Ministers, I want you to go. But leave, I want you to go and tell a lost and dying world that I paid the penalty for their sin. Pray, if they can be delivered, they can be set free. When? Now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible said what the law could not do. Give me Romans 8. God be swore. When I would to do good, evil is always present. That's the seventh chapter of Romans. Why don't you move out of the seventh chapter? Let's get over in the eight. Let's see what the eight says. There is therefore now. There is therefore now. No condemnation. The devil got folk making excuses. Said, oh, you can't live that type of life. You can't do that and you can't do this. The apostle Paul said, I can do all things through Christ. That's true. Through Christ, you can lay that ball down. Through Christ, you can lay those crutches down. Through Christ, you can turn your back on that ball. Amen. I want you to tell this lost and dying world that I want to Calvary, that they could be set free, they could have joy, that they could have peace. Read. There is therefore now. There is that. Listen to what he said. When you get delivered, you're no more that slave you were. See, when you in sin, you're a slave to the devil. We got people pretending in church. Pray God that they're saved. But listen, when you get saved, the power, part the power said, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Have your life been changed? The gospel can change your life. God can give you joy, peace, and happiness. How many believe that tonight? You don't have to pretend that you say, amen, go into all the world. Tell this good news. The gospel is good news. Say, so, brother, I don't call that good news. And you're condemning me from, from the habit I got. I'm not condemning you. If you read the word of God, he said, those that believe not, is condemned. I'll come to bring you the good news and let you know you don't have to be bound that way any longer. You can be set free. Amen. You can be delivered the good news. God wants you free. Not only that, men and women of God, God wants you to go forth. I'm going to anoint you. I want you to go forth and tell this good news. Pray God to those that are bound. I'm going to anoint you. You shall cast out devils in my name. I'm going to give you the thought to, to use my name. You believe it? Say, man. Hallelujah. You don't have to be bound. But that thing that got you bound. So many people standing in the pulpit making excuses. We don't have to make excuses for God. That's nothing can withstand the power of God. Amen. And God give you that privilege to come. He said, whoso never will, let him come. Amen. Read just a little further there. There is therefore now. There is therefore now. When you get delivered, you are a clean individual. You are set free. And if you're not set free, pray that God want to set you free tonight. Read. No condemnation. There is no condemnation. To them which are in Christ Jesus. Them which are in Christ Jesus. Who walk not after the who flesh. Who walk not after the flesh. See, when you get saved, you don't walk after the flesh. You're not full of lust. You're not trying to defend all them ungodly habits you got when you get saved, when you get delivered. The reason you're defending those things is because you need deliverance. Reading the preacher standing in the pulpit and defend those things because he's not delivered. Read. But after the Spirit. But after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit. Of the life in Christ Jesus. Of the life in Christ Jesus. Have made me free. Has made me free. This is what Jesus wants us to tell this lost and dying world. Listen, tell that prostitute she don't have to do that. And that's sin. The devil got a bound. She can be set free. And we got a lot of self-righteous folks. Yeah, I never did that. I'll never shut. I'll never use profanity. 
but you're just not saved. You go to hell just like that prostitute. There's no other name on heaven where a man may be saved under the name of Jesus Christ. Well, there's no shedding of blood. There is no remission of sin. Amen. You, I don't care how good you live, except you accept Christ. Amen. Christ became our substitute. And he wants us to tell every creature that I died for you. By my stripes, you can be healed. Amen. You can be set free. You can have joy, peace, and happiness. Read. For the law of the Spirit of the life in Christ has made me free from the law of sin See, and death. See, when you get saved and you come to the Lord, put, cast yourself on the mercy of God and ask God to forgive you. And God will set you free. You're not saved by your righteousness. Amen. You're not saved by your goodness. I read a testimony one time of two lawyers was coming from town and they seen a big tent meeting and they decided they'd stop by and visit the tent. And while they were sitting there, the preacher was preaching, they came under conviction and, and they both went to the altar. One got saved and filled, another one didn't. And when they got in the car and started, he said, I don't understand why you got saved and I didn't. So now I pleaded my case and I pleaded my case. He said, that's your trouble. You should have pleaded it. guilty. You cannot get saved by yourself. I don't care how you sing in the choir, how long you pray that you've been on the earth. You pray. That's good work, but good work will not save you. You must, your faith must be in the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the only way you can be saved. That's the only way you can be delivered. It's by faith. Read. For what the law could not do. Listen to what it said. For what the law could not do. And that it was weak through the and flesh. And that it was weak through the flesh. God sent in his own right son. There. The law could only point out sin. It only show you what's wrong. That's, that's when we can't legislate laws now to change people's lives. You can pass a law. But these laws we got now is crooked. But the law, if you commit the dirt, you point it out. You was under Dutch because you committed the Dutch, but it could not deliver you from that thing. You was an alcoholic, it point out you was an alcoholic. Or whatever thing you were guilty by, the law could point it out, but it could not keep you from doing it. That's when I thank God for grace. Grace can not only praise God, can show you what's wrong, but grace can do something about it. Are you listening to me? For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. God sent in his God son. God sent in his son. In the likeness, in of, the sin likeness flesh, of sin for flesh. And for sin. And for sin. Condemned sin in the flesh. He condemned sin. He put on a body like you and I got. He came down here and walked and showed us that we could live. And he condemned sin in the flesh. That's why you can be delivered. All the good news is. Your life can be changed if you want to be changed. Preachers, I want you to go into all the world. That's why we come here in these meetings like this to assemble together to share ideas, pray good experiences that we may go out and win the souls for the Lord. We're living in the last days. Amen. The devil is putting up a fight. He's trying to hold everybody he can. Brother, he have all kind of tricks trying to hold those folks. But let me tell you, the gospel of Jesus Christ can set them free. You believe it? Say amen. I, do you love him tonight? I want you to go into all this world. They shall lay hands on the sick. Now, how many to believe you can lay hands on the sick? The Bible says you can lay hands on the sick and the sick shall recover. Hallelujah. Praise God, I was tending to church. I was reading testimony the other day. No, my love of testimony. This Bible is full of testimonies. Amen. About the goodness of God. Listen. If your heart is open some way and somehow God going to let the gospel get there. This man, pray had been working on a job for, pray God, I guess, 20 some odd years. And he finally took sick. He was, he had cancer of the bowels and the stomach. They began to get weak and weaker for 11 years. He'd been like that five years. He'd been going in and out of the hospital. And finally the doctors told him. So there ain't nothing else we can do. And they said this man was so sick that they had to, praise God, they couldn't let him sleep on the same, same floor with his family. He slept on the second level and he slept on the first. Said you could smell that odor was sickening all over the house. Hadn't been able to eat anything in 30, 31 days. 
only way he could take water was through ice cubes and suck it. And the doctor said, we're sorry. Ain't nothing else we can do. My wants to go home. I can bear witness to that. I've ministered to people in that same shape, sick, couldn't eat. Doctor sent them home to die. But I thank God for the good news of Jesus Christ. It's joy to walk into a home and pray to a hospital and see a person laying there and pray to their eyes, sock the back of their head, death grinning in their face. You walk in and tell them, said, I got some good news for you. Jesus loves you. Man's extreme, but it's God's opportunity. I come to tell you, Jesus can heal you. And you read it out of the word of God. I'm the Lord thy God that healed thee. Didn't say except you had penicillin. Didn't say I had to agree with what the doctor said. Instead, a little nurse came by. Somebody think you got to be a bishop or something to preach the gospel. But a little nurse came by. They knew him. And they said, pray God the the pain pills wouldn't stop the pain. Sometimes you could hear him screaming all over the house. And she came by and looked at him and told him, said, Jesus can heal you. The man that never went to church, never heard the gospel. Hallelujah. Oh, he wasn't in church. But one of God's servants went by and carried the good news. The gospel is good news. If you're going through the night, maybe your home is broken up and you don't know what to do. Listen, beloved, God can straighten that thing out. You're in the valley of decision and don't know what to do and which way to turn. God can give you direction tonight. And she told him about Jesus. So he said, well, man, the doctor doesn't give me up. He said, all his trust was in the doctors. He said, they can't do nothing. She said, listen, you tried them time and time again. So why don't you try Jesus? Praise God. To just try him. Ain't nothing else. Why not try Jesus? And she, she referred him to a preacher that was preaching on the radio. I said, why don't you write a, write a letter? Finally, she, he said, okay, I've tried everything else. Everything else failed. So he wrote the letter. And one morning, he was laying there in pain, in agony and pain, screaming. The preacher came on, called his name, said, I'm praying for you today. I'm praying for you this morning. And this sinner, never been to church, never heard the gospel, begin to listen. Faith come by hearing and hearing comes by hearing the word. God's concerned about you. Man may forget you, but God's concerned about you. God loved you. He, Christ died for you. You believe it? Say amen. Listen, the preacher began to pray for him. And the Holy Ghost began to move upon him. The power of God. Hallelujah. That's no limit to prayer. Oh, the hand of the Lord is not short that he not, cannot say, neither is he heavy that he cannot hear. And from that radio station or through that table, whichever way it came, it came into that room, into that stick room was full of stick. The people couldn't stand it. He was screaming and hollering of the pain, but all it was, that hand of God came through there and rushed down and touched him. So they began to vibrate. Wife didn't know anything about God either. She, thought, she was standing there thinking he was dying. But he said, I know I couldn't have been dying because I was feeling too good. Hallelujah. But the thing said he lifted his hand. Asked God to forgive him. Asked God to deliver him and set him free. Not in a church house. In his own house. Hallelujah. God met him there. This is the good news God wants us to carry. This is why we're assembled here together, that we may learn more how to go out and witness and tell this lost world. You know, sometimes when we come together like that, it stirs us up to do more. Brother, that was a time we need to run with the gospel. It's not. I'm not talking about garbage. That's a different than garbage. I'm not talking about storytelling. I'm talking about preach the gospel. You can preach about Daniel and never preach the gospel. But to preach the gospel, you got to preach Christ and him crucified. You believe it? Say mine. So you got the vibration. 
Get back in the lay there, and his wife standing there looking at it. It's a mistress by the power of God. And that power was here tonight. God is ready to meet your needs. God want to meet your needs tonight. God want to heal you. God want to save you. God want to deliver you. God want to put you in a place where you can run with the gospel and tell the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen. The preacher said, praise God. So I want you to get up and eat anything you want to eat. On the radio, never seen him. But the preacher was moving under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. You don't have to see, you just go move by the eyes of Jesus. Said, get up. Eat whatever you want. He told it why. I said, the preacher told me to eat whatever I want. So I want two eggs, fried eggs. And some toast. 30 days I ain't ate a bite of nothing. No juice, no nothing. He even had to suck ice cube to get water. And she looked at him. And she went on and cooked him. He ate him. Then doesn't have him. Late that evening she came back and said, Honey, what you want for supper? I said, I'll tell you what I want. I want a hot dog and some onion and mustard. All the trimmings. This man had been sick for five years, 11 years. Doctors walked off and gave him up and sent him home to die. Smelled so bad as people couldn't get close to him. When well, now all the stink is gone. All the pain is gone. He's smiling. He's up walking around. Well, praise God, mustard and onion to kill some of us almost. He says, I want mustard and all. I want hot dog and all the trimming. He said, I tell you what, why are you fixing that one? Fix me two more. I want three. And he ate them. And then nothing happened. So three days later, I'm talking about the gospel of Jesus Christ. It still works. Catch someone by the hand and say, it still works. Said he was out there, praise God. Rejoicing around washing his car and he was feeling good and fine and said one of those doctors that sent him home to die and said he only had a month to live drove by and said he turned white as a sheet and almost had a wreck stopped his car and backed it up and got out so what are you doing out here so what happened to you he said Jesus healed me he said it had to be because nobody else could do it well the God's a miracle worker you believe it say man folks are dying without cry without the message we need to get the message and run tell this dying world that Christ is alive he's a miracle worker he's a healer he's a deliverer and he'll set you free give him it say man Woo! we want to all the world and tell them preach the gospel it's the power of God and the salvation of them that believe. I know it'll work. I've seen God set drunk. Pray God show them up instant. I've seen people get up and walk. We're seeing God heal. We're seeing God save. We're seeing God deliver the people day by day. God, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. You believe it? Shame, man. I was telling the people sad tonight. I read a testimony. Hallelujah. Young man had arthritis so bad he couldn't work. Couldn't hardly walk. Couldn't hardly sit up. Friends felt sorry for him. They went and got him. So I did take him to church. Why don't you bring your son to church? Why don't you bring that mother to church? You don't know what might happen. But get in there where the person of God was. And they took him to church. And pray that everything was crowded and doors were shut and they while they were sitting around there. They asked, said, can we? He's hurting so bad. Can't you sit him somewhere inside open the door? So they set him in a little hall back there that was dark. Amen. Outside of the auditorium. So when they opened the doors to start having church, the people rushed in and forgot the man. Left him in the back in that dark hall. Man may forget you, but God won't. 
And they went there, and man, they had a beautiful service. Folk were shouting, praising God like they're doing here tonight. People got saved, got delivered, got healed. And when they came out and started to get in the car, and they said, wait a minute, hey, where's Joe? Oh, we forgot. And left him in the hall back there. See, he couldn't come out of his cell. So they went and got him and praised him on the home. They would just apologize. Said, Joe, we're sorry, we're sorry. We forgot you, we forgot you. And he didn't send him on home. And the next morning, they were feeling so bad, they decided to go back down there to talk to Joe. No one back down there. Joe was, wasn't at the house. He was out in the garden there. Horn the weeds out of there. Something he hadn't been, hadn't did in years. Said, Joe, what happened to you? He said, yesterday while I was sitting back there in that little dark hall, while the service was going on, all at once something came over me. All my pain left. They forgot Joe, but God didn't. You believe it, say mine. Oh, glory to God. Just get in touch with God. If I can believe all things are possible to them that believe, you believe it, say mine. Woo! Let's run and carry the good news to this lost and dying world. You don't have to pretend. You don't have to hypocrite. Listen, God can set you free. You can have the real thing. You can be baptized with the Holy Ghost. God can loose you from drugs. God can set you free. God can put your home back together. You have been shaming. Woo! I want you to go to all the world. Tell this good news that God is a deliverer. You believe it's same man. Yesterday morning, I believe it, no Saturday morning, Sister Mary told me, listen, I got something to tell you. So one of the sisters needed a car. They got money crazy to believe this. But we can believe like this in the 96. And that was a place they said they were going to auction off a bunch of cars. And she believed God. I think she had about $20 in the pocket. I need a car. Take me working. Take my kids to church or wherever they want to go. I need a car bad. And she got about 5 o'clock went out there. And made her way in there. And found that car. Well, horn. Found that car and sit in it. Mm -hmm. Sit there with twenty dollars. What can you buy at twenty dollars? Well, I want my car. So the fellow come by there and encourage her. Say, that's a good car. So finally she kind of got a little discouraged. How she could? He said, Get back in that car. Stay there. And she obeyed. And one, one long fella come by. And they were sticking the price on the cars. They come by her car. But a stick up there. Five dollars. You notice I gave you some, some testimony of yesteryear, then I gave you some. Good car. Drove it home. Five dollars. You can't beat that with a hand. Come on, let's believe God. If God can do that for her, God can do something for you. You believe it? Say amen. The Bible said God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. I'm not preaching a condemnation message. You already condemn. If you're in sin, you condemn. If you're bound by drug, you condemn to hell. But I come to bring you the good news. I know a man. His name is Jesus. He can turn you around. He can set you free. Give him a shame, man. Woo!